Hi again, here we are to continue our discussion of Xcode, core data, you know, we're using this to-do app. And, uh, you know, in the last episode, we kind of finished up everything we need to do with core data, but there's still a couple loose ends to take care of. Um, you'll notice that, uh, you know, if I restart my app every time I start it, you know, it's going to show the data that I saved, right? And you can see it's got the to-dos that I saved from the previous time. Um, but, you know, if I check these off, like I've done these things, and then I quit the app and I restart it, the, uh, the check marks don't reappear. And the reason why is, you know, we're updating the, the, the completed property of the to-do objects, right? But we didn't save the context, right? Because... Uh, those to-do objects are in the managed data. So, you know, if we just update their completed property locally we, and don't update the context, then the, it doesn't get saved for retrieval. Or, you know, when, like when we persist the data and we bring it back out of storage, like the changes aren't there. So what we need to do is this, right? Let's take a quick look here. Um, you know, there's a couple ways you could handle this. You know, um, let's go to View Controller. So this part is actually going to happen in View Controller. And, you know, if you look in View Controller here, you'll see under um, under Table View, uh, self erode Index Path, you can see we're showing the check mark here. And then if we scroll down a little bit further, um, we've got Table View Delegate Methods. And we've got this method, did select row at index path. Okay, so did select row at index path. So this means you selected a row, and um, and then we pulled up a to do from the to do manager. So we said to do manager shared instance to do at index, and this gave us the to do, and then we set the completed property on the to do. Well, that's working pretty good. Um, the problem here is we didn't save the context afterwards, right? So we made a change to a managed object. And, you know, that's fine, we can do that, but it, but it won't, you know, persist or the change won't be saved for later unless we save the context, okay? So what we're going to do is this. We're going to say um, to do manager dot um, shared instance dot save context, okay? So this is the one thing that's going to happen outside. You know, I tried to keep everything inside to do manager. And we could actually make this uh, to do, you know, completed property. We could make that change into do manager, but that seemed a little bit convoluted. So I'm just going to do it here because this is a pretty simple little step, right? Just one extra line of code here. Um, I know that's we're slipping down the slippery slope there. But uh, anyway, so we just make one little change here. And then that should hopefully persist our, 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 you know, completed property, right? So let's give it a test. Um, I'll click the, the Run button. And then you'll see my to-do show up. And, you know, I brushed my teeth today and I ate my breakfast, but I did not tie my shoes. So I'll check those two. And then I'll stop the, the app. And then I'll rebuild and run it again. And then these two have the check mark, and the other one doesn't have the check mark. So that's working pretty good, right? And then I can check this one and uncheck the other one. And then we'll stop it and run it again. And then hopefully it remembers. Yeah, and then it's got these two items, right? So there you go. So that, that should, you know, totally complete the, um, the to-do app. Um, you know, and I hope that was useful and interesting for everybody. Um, you know, there's a lot more that we can do with that. And I'll, I'm going to add some more videos of just little things that we can add to our project to make it more interesting. Um, but this should complete, like, the base project, right? So this is, like, the basic project that we're creating. Um, you know, it's got to-do items. They get persisted into storage, and then we pull them up out of storage. And then, um, you know, it lists them in the table view, and we can set their properties or add new items or remove items from the table view. Um, let's actually check on removing an item. I didn't check that yet. Let's, I forgot to do that. Let's, let's do that here, too. So uh, maybe, you know, there's no reason to, uh, oh, you know, I didn't do the remove item. Let's, let's actually do that. So um, we didn't add that feature yet. So here's what we're going to do, right? Let's go to uh, View Controller Swift. And what we want to do 
is we want to do, um, we're going to go down here to uh, table view delegate methods. And what we want to add is we want to type in, just start typing table view. And what we want is we want um, uh, can edit row at index path. Okay, so can edit row at index path. Okay. And what's happening here is the table view is going to send the delegate a method to say, to ask the question, can you edit the row at this particular index path? So something happened in the table view at one of the rows, and table view is going to ask the controller, can you edit that row? And so this function returns a Boolean, true or false, right? It's going to return true, yes, that row can be edited, false, the row cannot be edited. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to return true. Okay, all the rows can be edited. Okay, so that's that's good. That doesn't quite complete the whole process though. Okay, so we, we're going to say yes, you can edit rows, but now we have to say, you know, how they can be edited. So we'll say table view, and the one we want this time is called commit editing style. Okay, so commit editing style. Okay. And um, so table view commit editing style. And then it's going to tell us, you know, if you read this, it's going to say um, commit editing style. Let me put a line return here and here. And you can see that this function is actually called table view commit editing style for row at, at index path. So what it's going to do is it's going to ask us like, hey, you know, are you going to commit to this particular editing style? And then it's going to give us the editing style, okay, which is a special type called table view cell editing style, right? And then it's going to say which index path, like which row in the table view can be edited. And, and then the style that you're trying to edit it. So the style is like what you're trying to do, okay? So delete is actually the style we're looking for. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say if um, editing style equals dot uh, delete. There's a couple, and you'll notice like if I type the dot again, um, you'll see it says table view cell editing style delete. So that's one of the styles, right? So we'll choose that one. And so if the style is delete, then what we'll do is we'll want to remove that cell at, the, at that index path from the array. Because remember, the index path has the row number, and the row number matches up to the index in the array. So what we'll do is we'll say um, to do, wait, I put that in the wrong spot there. It's going to be down here. Let's do to do manager.shared instance um, dot remove to do at index path. Okay, and then we'll say um, index path dot row. Okay. And so this removes the to do from the, um, from the database, but we also need to remove the, um, the to do from, or we need to remove that particular cell from our, um, from our table view. And what we're going to do is we're going to do that first. Or no, actually, we're going to do that second. Yeah, I forget. One, it crashes one way, and then it does. It works fine the other way. So I, I think we remove this one first. No, I think actually, wait, yeah, we do it the other way. We got to remove the cell first, and then we're going to remove the um, the thing. And if it doesn't work, we switch them around. So anyway, so let's uh, let's remove the cell. So what we're going to do is we're going to say table view uh, dot um, delete rows at index paths. Okay, so pay attention to this one. It says delete rows at index paths, right? So it says, you know, the S means multiple, right? So, and if we look carefully, this says index paths with an S, and then it has the square brackets. So that's really an array of index paths. So when we do delete rows at index paths, it actually deletes multiple rows. So what we want to do is we want to delete um, just one row. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the square brackets there and then type in index path here, right? So that's an array with one index path in it. And the index path is the row that you're going to commit the editing style for, 
right? And then it also gives us the option here to say, you know, with animation, right, with row animation. And so this UI table view row animation can be any one of the built-in row animations. And there's a couple, I'll do um, dot left, right? Uh, so we'll say uh, dot left, and that, that means the, the row will slide off the screen to the left, okay? So we'll, uh, we'll test this here. For some reason, I think I got this backwards. We'll, we'll fix it'll crash and then we'll fix it. So anyway, um, we'll test it here. And uh, any moment now, it will start up again, hopefully. I don't know why it's not cooperating here. Wait, let's click again. Any moment. Hmm, what is going on there? Wait, let's try it again. Sometimes you have a problem here. You know what you can do is you can do the same thing you do on the um, on the phone. Um, actually, it looks like mine is not working. Let me quit and then restart it. Um, there it goes. Oh, there we go, right. So uh, any moment now, oh, there we go. So let's say I wanna delete this one. So now you can see that I've got um, can edit row at index path and um, commit editing style. So when I slide to the left, it reveals the delete button. And when I click on it, oh yeah, I get the, I get the crash. So um, I think it's gonna say something about the number of rows. It doesn't match the number of items, right? The, so you can see here it says, um, yeah, the number of rows contained in an existing section after an update must be equal to the number of rows contained in the section bef before the update, right? So the thing is, um, we, or I deleted the row here from the table view or from the, the, the array, but I actually deleted the, the item from the table view first, right? So we actually need to do it in this order. I made a mistake there. Sorry about that. So, uh, so we'll delete the item from the tape from the from the to do manager, and then we'll delete the row from the table view. Okay. So we'll do this. Uh, we'll test it again. Let's see it build, and then we'll delete tie shoes, and it slides off to the left. And there we go. And we'll add another one. Maybe we'll just call this one A. Save it, add another one, call it B, and save. And there you can see those. I can complete these guys, and then maybe I can delete this B one. And then if I stop and I come back, then hopefully those ones we deleted won't be there because they got removed. Oh, there we go. So it looks like everything's working. So anyway, so there you go. So yeah, just remember, don't make my mistake. Um, we need to remove the items from our data source first and then remove the cell for that item from the table view second, okay? And thanks for watching, and I hope that's um, useful to you guys, and uh, great.